All right. This one, mm -hmm. pizza or tacos? Tacos. Wow. I thought that was going to actually be tough for you. <laughs> I think that's maybe also a product of living in Tucson now and having so many good Mexican restaurants mm -hmm. that it's like... I mean, yeah, I do like pizza, but I can get the tacos that we have around here. Yeah, yeah. I'll go get Mexican food and get tacos. All right, welcome back to another episode of This and That, a coffee chat with the Harris. I'm Kelly, this is my dad, Scott. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you might be at the time that you're watching this. I think we'll have a little bit lighter of a week this week. Oh, I hope so. After our very long week last week. Yes, yes. Um, well, and we have a meeting to go to here shortly, so we're going to have to move right along this time. Yes, we do have a meeting to get to. Yes. So. <laughs> All right, well, let's start with your economic update. Well, as anticipated, last week was a big announcement by the Federal Reserve where they reduced the uh, discount rate by 50 basis points. And so uh, that signaled that they're probably a little bit behind on the labor market yeah. and uh, inflation was enough under control that they could make a big move like that. So. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they do for the rest of the year, but uh, thoughts are that they'll continue to have uh, more of their typical 25 basis point reductions uh, at least two more times this year, if not three, and then more, a couple more in 2025 uh, based on everything I'm reading, so, um, which is good news. It's mm -hmm. some relief that we're getting on, on the interest rates. Again, the mortgage markets had already baked that in. Yeah, for the most so, part. We'll see how they respond uh, going forward as they anticipate those additional rates as well. All right. And then the other big news uh, this week is the uh, consumer confidence uh, report came out and it slid down to 98.7 um, and that's down from 105 uh, point six in August. So it's a fairly sizable drop there. Um, it's the largest one month decline since August of 2021. So, uh, Interesting. and the uh, concern for those surveyed are, are two things, uh, jobs and inflation. So mm -hmm. the things that we've been talking about an awful lot. Mm -hmm. And just to give you a contrast, the uh, index reading was at 132.6 in February of 2020, right before the pandemic started. And so mm -hmm. that's where we were on our thoughts on the economy uh, prior to the pandemic hitting. Uh, typically between 80 and 120 is kind of a neutral economy if consumer confidence drops below 80. That was gonna be my next question. Yes. What, what exactly do these numbers tell us? Yes, so at below 80 is, is a really, really good indicator of a recession. So we're not there yet mm -hmm. on, on this particular measure. And of course, above 120 is an expanding, robust economy. So, okay. so those were those two items. Um, not earth shaking and it's in line with the news that we've been reporting for a uh, couple months now. Okay. Okay. That's all I have on, on the economy. Well, we spent a lot of time on real estate last week, so I think we will skip the real estate side this week and okay. pick it back up next time. All right. Very good. I was up in Oregon for part of this past week. You were? Visiting family. Yes. It was a trip, not a vacation, but... It definitely was a trip for you, <laughs> yes. Um, but I think, you know, it was good to catch up with family there. Um, and I think my two non-family highlights from the trip, one was walking the, I don't know, three quarters mile or something like that to the Safeway. It was like in the 60s, I think. I was wearing a light jacket. The sun was filtering through the trees. And I was like, this is nice. Yeah, September is probably the nicest month of the year in Oregon. I've always felt that. Yeah. Um, and, and we did have our faults fall as we're back over 100 degrees <laughs> again for the foreseeable future here in Tucson. Barely, but... Barely, yes. And the, the nice thing, though, is um, 
while it's not officially the end of the monsoon season, you can tell by the dryness in the air yeah. that the monsoon is over. Yeah. So it cools off quickly at night and mm -hmm. you have much more comfortable nights now. And so yeah. even during the day when it's warm, it's, it doesn't feel as warm because again, the humidity has dropped significantly from yeah. our typical monsoon Summer. season. So it's not as bad as it sounds for those that aren't used to living in yeah. the desert. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so yes, it was our false fall. We, we knew better. <laughs> yeah. We knew better. <laughs> we did. Um, so I got my, my slight break from the heat uh, up there and it was morning and walked down to the Safeway. It felt like going downhill that direction. So it pretty much is, yes. Yeah. yeah. And so um the way back was a little tougher carrying a bag of groceries, but yeah, that was nice. And then my other non family highlight was I got one trip into Burgerville. Oh for yes. a dairy free milkshake. I yeah. was I was not on the pace of my May trip when I was there for all or part of six days and I got Burgerville three times. So I wasn't on that pace. I was only one for four on this one, but I at least got one. So for those that don't know, Burgerville is a, a regional burger chain. Yeah, Northwest. Northwest. Um, and they are famous for their fresh fruit milkshakes. Yeah. And a few years ago, they came out with their dairy-free milkshakes, which you could not tell the difference between no. the real thing and, and these. And so it's a real treat when we get to go home. For the longest time, Salem didn't have a Burgerville, but I heard that they were going to build one. Yeah, I think they have one in Salem and one in Kaiser coming. Okay. And we had to either go to Monmouth, which was a trip into rural country uh, uh, outside of Salem, you, you had to want to go, yeah. <laughs> and or you had to be heading up to or back from Portland because there was mm -hmm. one just off the freeway in Tigard. Yeah. Um, so often after Timbers games. <laughs> we would make sure we hit the drive through <laughs> yes. on the way home from Timbers games to get a milkshake because, oh boy, they're good. Yep. Yeah. 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 So uh, a couple of the cousins and I on our way down from Portland over the weekend uh, stopped and got one. I have gone to the Monmouth one a couple of times with my grandma, taking her for a drive out there. And she likes to look around Monmouth and Independence and, yeah. you know, see what's going on in those little towns. And so we'll go get milkshakes and then I'll drive her around the little towns. That's nice. So didn't get to do that this time. We didn't rent a car this time um, since it was a shorter trip, but uh, we did on the way back down from Portland over the weekend make a stop. I was insistent. I told, <laughs> I told the cousins, I told the aunts and uncles, I'm like, at some point on this trip, I'm getting my Burgerville. I don't care what it is, <laughs> but we are making a stop at some point. And so. So Burgerville, if you're listening, uh, we would love for you yes. to open, you know, not in Tucson, right here in Marana. <laughs> you know, there is a, a new commercial district that's developing. It'd be a perfect place for you to uh, put in a, a, a Arizona Burgerville. Yes. That'd be awesome. Yes. Yeah. And I got the classic strawberry. Of course. One of my cousins told me that the cold brew is really good, but it was like, after four in the afternoon already. Oh. By the time we were going, I was like, I'm not getting a cold brew milkshake at four in the afternoon. No. But sometime I want to go there early enough to try that one because I've been wondering about it. And I was just told on this trip that it is in fact very good. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. That might be a good pregame if we make it back for a Timbers game, which I don't think it's going to happen this year, the way our schedules no. are lining up. So... Maybe next year. Maybe next year, yes. When we go up for the uh, IndyCar. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sure, there's going to be a game somewhere around that time. Whether or not it's home is... Well, this year they had one. Yeah. And, and it was a, a thriller. Oh, is and, this the 4-4 game? Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, that would have been the one that we would have been at. <laughs> yeah. Darn it. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. 
That would have been exciting. Yeah. Well, glad you made it back safe and sound. Uh, it, it, yeah. it was a little bit interesting because you and your mom missed your flight. Yeah, we tried to stay a little bit longer with my grandma to see her a little longer. We slightly overstayed how long we should have been there. And security took much longer than it normally does, it felt like. Mm -hmm. And we did not catch our gate in time. Yes, so somebody <laughs> had to drive up to Phoenix in the middle of the night to pick them up because they bought tickets into Phoenix because at that time, there are no more flights into Tucson. Actually, I think there was one more through Phoenix. There was just only one ticket on it and two Oh, of that's us. true, yes, yeah. Because I think we would have been able to connect to a later one into Tucson, but we are just slightly in that time of year still where we don't have a direct flight from Tucson to Portland. Right. I think next month. I think so too. It starts back up and we'll have that direct flight. It would have made things easier, but. Yes, yeah. Alaska, if you could make that a year round thing, <laughs> yeah. we'd really appreciate it. We'd fly it whenever we go back to Portland. <laughs> Yeah. We're just pitching all the uh, expansion ideas. Yes, today. exactly. <laughs> today, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> we should join the Chamber of Commerce, you know. <laughs> yeah. Anything else from your trip that. Uh... Not in particular. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I mean, because of that, I, w I felt sort of out of the loop of what was going on this week and. Weekend, so. Well, so you didn't miss much as far as sports goes. Mm -hmm. So we'll just kind of transition into to sports. <sighs> um, Singapore. Was the one race I actually got to watch. And was, other than some mid-pack stuff, fairly boring because it is nearly impossible to pass at Singapore and actually most of the passing was done in the pits with undercuts right and so you know there isn't a lot to report I didn't actually find it that boring but I was also doing other things while watching it so it's like washing dishes and packing up and whatnot so maybe because my attention was split and I just you know looked back over and someone's voice got elevated that yeah <laughs> I didn't feel that it was that boring but and it's the type of track that so far, every race prior to this year at Singapore has had a safety car. Yes, this is something I did make a note of. And there was no safety car this year. Which is our ninth race in a row without a safety car. You know, uh, they keep on saying that, but Baku had a tremendous wreck at the end. And yes, maybe they finished under a virtual safety virtual car. safety car. But, you know, that should have had a... If, if it had been mid-race, they would have had a safety car. Yeah. But because it was the last second to last lap when the, the wreck happened, they just put them under the virtual safety car and then let them ride around for a for a lap. Yeah. But, yeah, it's it's been since Canada since they've had a legit safety, safety car. car. Of course, That's Canada like had rain. Yeah, and I, was, I saw that there were some afternoon showers um, on one of the days. Mm -hmm. But none of the none of the sessions were impacted by rain. Yeah, none of them, I was hoping that either qualifying or the race itself would have some to make a little more passing happen and excitement and whatnot. Um, and nope, not weather this year. didn't cooperate on that this year. So they're now taking their autumn break. Yeah. And they'll be back in a month at Coda, the yeah. Circuit of the Americas in austin texas mm -hmm. so get your yeehaw on yes it's amazing how many of the the drivers like to dress up at, like cowboys and whatnot as they arrive into the paddock area so speaking of cowboys do we think danny rick's gonna have a seat come austin no i'm actually kind of shocked that we've not heard an announcement yet i was expecting a monday morning announcement well you know matt and tommy went on a a 10 minute rant <laughs> yesterday about that and i think i had that i was watching something but i yes. saw that they like weren't updating the 
like next driver's ratings for a while. I'm like, okay, I think they're talking about yes, what's going on with Daniel Ricardo for a while here. And they're just like, you know, what is this process that you're going to go through over the autumn break? You've already made the decision. He spent an hour and a half after the race in the paddock area saying goodbye to everybody. Yeah. So, you know, just make the announcement and get on with it. Yeah. So, no, no, I don't think he'll have a ride. Will he have a microphone in his hand? I think there's a very high probability that Danny Rick might be doing interviews um, in the paddock area. Uh, do we think it'd be as soon as Austin, or do you think they would at least let him wait until next season? You know, if I was Sky Sport, I would sign him up as quickly as I can, even if it's a one-off contract. Mm -hmm. He loves the United States. He loves mm -hmm. Coda. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, put him in his element and let him have fun and, you know, <laughs> let the, the fans, you know, really enjoy, you know, saying farewell to Danny in a proper way. Right. So that's my thought. Mm -hmm. So Sky Sports, if you're watching. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. That. I feel like everyone was frustrated with how v Carb and Red Bull have... Well, and their this. strategy for him was just terrible. Awful, yeah. Starting him on softs from the back, where typically if you're at the back, if you're not going to go on the primary tire, you're going to go on the hards. Right. Because then you want to run a long time and then get onto the... Hope for that safety car. Hope for that safety car, then yeah. hop onto the, the preferred tire. So they ran him 10 laps. So they didn't even run him like 20 where he could then finish on, yeah. on the hards. So they... Baked in a two stop when everybody else is doing a one stop. Yeah. And then at the very end, they, they actually made it a three stop because they put them on softs again yeah. and sent them out to get the fastest lap to take a point from uh, Lando. Yeah. Uh, because, of course, this is Red Bull's second team. And so. It doesn't feel at all like collusion. No, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there was no communication going on with. Well, Probably wasn't any communication, but, you know, V-Carb understands their role. Yeah. And they are a second team for Red Bull. And if they can take a point away from the person that's chasing Max for Stappen in the championship, they're going to take that point away. Yeah. But it was just, it was just messy. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Matt and Tommy talked a lot about this wasn't the first time that V-Carb has had terrible strategy. And they said that they're probably the worst right now in Formula One on strategy, and everybody gives them a pass. And maybe... Because they're at the back. Yeah. They're not all the way at the back, but they're pretty darn close. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. It, it's, it's, it's frustrating, and yeah. um, we will see what's next for Danny Rick. I just don't see him necessarily just getting into a sports car and doing sports car racing i i think he's gonna with his personality get into television mm. um that doesn't mean he's not gonna race but i don't think that's gonna be his full-time gig i think that that'll be yeah. you know maybe endurance races and that type of thing who I'm, knows he might go to indycar oh i was gonna say i wonder if he would be one of the guest drivers for project 91 at track house in nascar that i think would be a fun oh he would love that too yeah pick yeah. up yeah and they've had former f1 drivers a few yes. times before yes so. they have yeah um were they running project 91 this year at all a little bit yeah little bit. i mean one one pablo montoya ran at watkins Glen. um was he with project 91 though i think he was but okay. you know the fact checkers on the internet on the internet yeah. will will make sure that i'm i'm right on that i'm not even gonna look it up i <laughs> Because I follow, they're one of the few teams that I actually follow on social media, mm -hmm. the Project 91 page in particular, and I don't remember seeing stuff pop up for this year. They had like three or four of them last year. Yeah. Um, well, maybe it's not called Project 91 this, anyway. this time, yeah, but it, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. So in NASCAR. Yes. Uh, all I saw was Larson led 90% of the laps. More than. Yeah. Yeah, it. Uh, he took the lead, I think, on the second or third lap of the race, and the only time he lost the lead was when he pitted and other cars didn't pit, and then he'd quickly get the lead back again. So it was uh, not an exciting Bristol race. 
Uh, what's interesting is they brought the same tire back as they had in the spring, okay. which shredded, if you remember. Mm -hmm. um, and some of the teams had anticipated that the tire was shred and they brought a setup that was going to take care of the tires. And then they didn't have a tire wear problem. And I think okay. that the difference was the track temperature was much warmer, which allowed the tires to heat up properly and and give rather than shred yeah. uh and so some of the teams like um daniel suarez they just had no speed interesting and so they barely made it into the next round of the playoffs mm -hmm. because they just had nothing and there was like a handful of teams that were set up to take care of the tires and it was such a big swing that they, they even once they saw that the tires weren't going to, they couldn't put the speed back in the car. Interesting. Yeah. So, so made it a bit of a lopsided race. Yes. Yes. So, uh, it, I mean, Bristol Under the Lights is always exciting, but quite frankly, this is probably one of the dullest <laughs> Bristol, Bristol Under the Lights. <laughs> That I've seen. So, as a result, oh. because this was one of the cutoff races, um, Joe Gibbs lost two of their teams that were in the playoffs. So, Ty Gibbs and Martin Truex Jr. And Martin Truex Jr. for the last year cannot buy an ounce of luck. Yeah. And uh, this was another case of it. I mean, he was close to the cutoff line, got a speeding uh, penalty okay. late in the race. Oh, man. And just could not make it make it up. Yeah. Uh, Brad Kozlowski from Rush Fenway um, also dropped out. And not a big surprise, Harrison Burton, you know, who had the, the win at Daytona to get him into the playoffs. Right. Um, from he, he, he didn't make it. 36th position or whatever he was before that. Right. So right now, uh, Hendrick Racing has one, two, Three, four. Yeah, four teams yeah, four. in the playoffs. So Jeez. all four of their teams. Penske has their three teams in the playoffs. And then you have um, uh, Joe Gibbs with two teams, Christopher Bell and Denny Hamlin. Okay. Remember, Christopher Bell is always that, that sneaky. Mm -hmm. He's currently second in points. Yeah, I saw that. Behind Kyle Larson. Yeah. Um, and then... Um, 2311 Racing has Tyler Reddick in there. They're third in points, so they've had a very, very good season. Yeah. And then Trackhouse has Daniel Suarez, who I said barely made the, the cut. And then uh, Stuart Haas has Chase Briscoe, who's currently last in points out of the playoff teams. I was going to say, also barely made the cut, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so Suarez, Bowman, and Briscoe are all separated by a point. Yeah, that's tight. Yes, and then only two points ahead of Suarez is Austin Sindrick. So okay. those folks are going to need some good races coming up mm -hmm. uh, at Kansas and elsewhere. That's right. I was just going to ask, where do we go this weekend? Kansas, yeah, so, that's right. Yeah, Kansas is A very next. close race during the regular season. Right, right. And uh, the pundits are saying that the, um, Kansas favors Tyler Reddick. So... Mm -hmm. We'll, we'll see. Um, it only takes one moment of misfortune, though, to, to change all that. Right. Um, they indicate that Ryan Blaney, that is not one of his favorite tracks. So if you're betting, those are your uh, who to uh, pick and who to avoid. Okay. So that's that's it on the, the, the NASCAR front. Uh, so I, on the NASCAR front, forgot to mention last week that it was announced that Larson is going for the double again next May. Yes. Um, and so he will be back with McLaren and IndyCar for the Indianapolis 500 and then trying to make the journey back to Charlotte for... I think I saw that there might be a stipulation that he um, gives priority to the NASCAR race if there's a weather situation this time. Oh, okay. Interesting. So, because... Because the weather in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. he got out of Indianapolis far later. Right. And then when he got to Charlotte, 
the race was called in Charlotte because of weather. Right. And so he never got in the car, so he never earned points. And, you know, it cost him the regular season championship, mm -hmm. quite frankly. That was the difference. Yes. Yeah. So I think Mr. Hendrick... Um, not going to let that happen again? Not going to let that happen again. Yeah. Well, let's hope for better weather come Memorial Day Sunday of 2025. <laughs> yes. So hopefully you're not hearing the leaf blower that's going on out, out, <laughs> outside. Um, and with the magic of Da Vinci Resolve, hopefully I can make it go away. Mm -hmm. But anyway, yes, we're, we're listening to droning. I actually hadn't noticed it until you said that. Well, that's because you're locked in, yeah. laser focused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, uh, unfortunately, weather in Indianapolis during the month of May is riddled with thunderstorms. Yeah. So you, it's, the odds are you, you have a good chance of a delay. One of these years, I'd like to see him actually do the whole thing. Yes, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. And you know, 1,100 miles of racing is a lot of racing in one day. Plus you hop on a plane and yeah, fly back in between, so. Yeah, that's that's a long day. Yes. So speaking of IndyCar, mm -hmm. uh, also sort of on the crossover side, um, Logan Sargent is set to test in November with Myo Shank Racing, which is not really a surprise, I don't think, to anyone. There's a lot of speculation that he was pretty quickly going to at least end up seeing about maybe getting an IndyCar ride after getting dropped from Williams in F1. Yeah. Um, so I'll be curious to see how that goes for him. And then IndyCar also this week announced that they have a new charter system like NASCAR. Yes. And have awarded charters um, to teams that have participated uh, or given the option to buy charters to teams that have participated in the last two seasons. Right. So which they the teams will then be able to sell mm -hmm. uh, in the future. So yep. yeah. they extended 25 charters um, and they are valid for all the races except for Indy, which makes right. sense. Yep. Um, and so we will see. It was actually good this year to see that Indy actually had to bump cars. Yeah. It'd been a few years since they've had a, a an overabundance of entries. Right. Uh, so you, that's an indication that the sport is getting stronger mm -hmm. again uh, when you have more cars than you need to fill the field and you have to go through the bumping process, which is incredibly stressful yeah. uh, for the teams and, and it's fun to watch. Yeah, it is. I was going to say, it's entertaining, but I wouldn't want to be in the middle of it. Yeah. And then, you know, they, they during qualifying, on bump day, they have the express lane, which means you have to forfeit your previous time, but you get to go out and whatever time you get is the time you're going to take. Or you have the, um, you know, we're in right now, but but we're a little nervous about it, so we'd like to go and improve line. So the express line gets to go out immediately, whereas mm -hmm. the other one, there's a queue. And sometimes those teams don't make it out. Mm -hmm. And somebody in the express line might have bumped, bumped them mm -hmm. and so it's choosing your line and how certain your time is is fascinating television it really is yeah and then we talked a little bit about the fact that all of their races are going to be on broadcast tv yes next year on fox on fox and so it'll be interesting to see um if that helps grow the sport some more i mean they have not recovered from the split right uh, of, of the series, you know, that was, uh, I'm going to probably get my dates wrong, but I think in the nineties, uh, it's been a long time. Yeah. And that series has really struggled to recover and get mm -hmm. the numbers that it used to get. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully there will be more sponsors, more interested now that they know that they'll have guaranteed races. Uh, yes. You know, at least for those 25 teams. And that Every it's going race. to be on broadcast TV. And it's going to be, yeah. So, so. And you know that Fox, because it is on broadcast TV, is going to promote the living dickens out of it. Yeah. So. 
Yeah, it'll be good. Exciting year for next year. Yeah, I'll be curious to see what happens with IndyCar next year. Okay. So, yeah. What else do you have over there? Well, on my trip, I finished one of the books from uh, Two Girls. So these are the Formula One romance one books? One Formula's Read a Romance book, Read an F1 Romance book month in August. So I ended up getting one of them. And I read it on the trip. Um, you can think early flights and way too long of naps keeping me up all night for that. Um, so it was entertaining. Um, I don't know that it's the best book I've ever read, but I was entertained. I enjoyed it. Um, definitely one of those where like you don't necessarily need to know Formula One to understand what's going on here. Right. Um, if you do, there's enough like little nuggets that you're like, oh yeah, I get this. Um, and I think they pretty closely followed like a, a loose kind of schedule. So like they were in Canada in I think June and, um, then did their European leg, had their summer break. So if you sort of look at like scheduling and all of that, it lines up pretty well with what actually happens. Um, but most of it was taking place off track. Um, basically, the gist is a, a driver and a reporter, for PR reasons, get stuck doing a European road trip together during the summer break. Ah, okay. And so a lot of the book takes place over the summer break. So it, it, when you talked about it follows the schedule, mm -hmm. uh, when Days of Thunder came out. He didn't bump you, he didn't nudge you. He rubbed you, and Rubin's son is racing. Many, many years ago, NASCAR had a very regimented schedule, and it had been in place for a long time. Mm -hmm. And in the movie, they didn't race the races in the right order. And it was, for the hardcore NASCAR fan, it was one of the... Unforgivable uh, sins yeah, of the Yeah, elements movie. <laughs> of frustration. But now the schedule's all tossy-turvy, and mm -hmm. they, they move things around fairly regularly that that there are no longer those set in uh, this is the race that follows that race and so on and so forth but I remember as a uh, big NASCAR fan watching the movie going that's not the next race <laughs> <laughs> yep yep these ones it, it was close enough that I wasn't questioning it so yep. okay so yeah that was my entertainment my so on a five-star Raking, where would you? Uh... Three and a half, maybe. Three and a half, okay. Yeah. All right. Like I said, not the best book I've ever read, but it was entertaining. Okay. Well, I'll so. put a link to the book in case somebody out there wants to <laughs> read a Formula One romance yes. novel. Okay. And it is book one in the series, and I don't remember from the podcast episode with this author who the next book is about but there's one character in particular i'm like okay it's got to be about him at some point so it's just a matter of when that one comes down the line but okay there was one non-main character that i was like okay i'm invested in this okay person the rest yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> so, all right yeah that that was about my week it was <laughs> Okay. Not very exciting. So uh, we 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 call this this and yeah we call this something. <laughs> uh huh. This and that a coffee chat. Mm hmm. So uh, I asked Chat GTP to put together or GPT one or the whichever the I asked Chat um, to pick together a little game of this and that. Okay. And so um, we're going to play a, a few minutes of this. I have many off of on here. We won't go through them all. Okay. Uh, so you're picking your favorites? I'm not even picking my favorites. I think I'll probably just go in order. Uh, that way we can uh, depart for our meeting on time. And then okay. we'll, we'll pick this up in another episode. Okay. So uh, coffee or tea? Coffee. <laughs> that was... I, I knew that. <laughs> that was not a hard answer on that one for me. Yeah. Uh, 
Now, I will say that I, I, my answer is coffee as well. However, uh, when in Ireland, every morning we'd go down for breakfast and we'd get a pot of tea, mm -hmm. you know, and you'd have a little milk with your tea. And, you know, I, I enjoyed that. Mm -hmm. And I would probably do that more if I knew what kind of tea that was. <laughs> That's specific. Because I, it, it, when I get home, I can never seem to find whatever tea I was getting in Ireland because it was quite good and I enjoyed it. Now I also drink my hibiscus tea, right? but I drink that more for my blood pressure than anything else. Right. So yeah, coffee yeah. for me as well. You know, it's like, you know, the family business to like tea, but <laughs> true. Yes. It tastes like watered down flavor to me and I just can't. <laughs> Well, Uncle, I try Uncle it. Kurt, if you're watching this. <laughs> Sorry. You know I don't like mint anyway, though, so. I mean, I guess they have other products. Yeah, they too, have other but... products, too. Okay. I, I think I know the answer to this one also. Okay. Morning person or night owl? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> Such a night owl. It's not even funny. Yes. Uh, and, and I'm a little bit of both. Yeah. So I think you've gotten more of a morning person as you've gotten older. Yes. I feel like when you're younger, you were solidly a night owl. Yeah. Well, that was partly because I was working two full-time jobs Yeah. Well. as well. So, you know, had my regular job and then I had my NASCAR job. And so right. Kelly would go to bed and I'd go down to my office and I was in PR and sports reporters work at night because that's when games are played. Yeah. You know, your basketball, your hockey, and all that type of stuff, and make my calls. And so, you know, start working at about 9 o'clock at night and go to bed around 1 o'clock or 2 o'clock in the morning, get up at 6, go to work. Um, that was back when I my, my favorite catchphrase was, sleep is overrated. Mm -hmm. I value my sleep a little bit more now. Yeah, my, my body won't let me sleep four hours a day. Yeah. So, okay. All right. This one. Beach vacation or mountain retreat? Hmm. Okay, are we going to a warm beach or a cold beach? <laughs> it's that. It's your call? <laughs> that impact. Is it, is it the Oregon coast or is it Hawaii? You yeah, know? exactly. <laughs> okay, so probably beach, but definitely preference to warm beach over cold beach if we're doing cold beach versus mountains eh, maybe the mountains on that okay i'm pretty much as much as i love the mountains i'm i'm going to answer beach yeah there's something about the sound of the ocean that's very relaxing the yeah. fresh sea air all all of that yeah. is is really nice and probably you know my favorite place on the planet is is banned in Oregon, a uh, piece of the yeah. golf there, but it's also on the ocean and, mm -hmm. you know, it's my happy place. I've been going there for a very long time. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, this is a good one. Book or movie? Probably book. Okay. Yeah. What, actually, what I've been finding interesting recently is all the random movies I've been watching or TV shows heavily have been book adaptations. So clearly I like the, okay, we've built a character, mm -hmm. you know, and have character development and a story and all of that. And then, you know, it loses some of that getting turned into a movie or a show. But I think sometimes without that backstory sometimes movies and shows miss some of that and you sort of have that baked in already if you're following a book well we talked about a couple of weeks ago you know, that we haven't seen an original movie in quite some time uh mm -hmm. everything's been a sequel a remake uh you know whatever it's it's you know does do people no longer have original thoughts uh, anyway mm -hmm. um i haven't read a novel although i'm working on one slowly yeah, uh, yeah when was the last time you picked that one up uh, probably well you know i've been not well so yeah, um i haven't read a, a 
a novel in a long time. Mm. And so I'm probably going to have to answer movie on this. Yeah. Uh, just because it only takes up an hour and a half to two and a half hours of my time, uh, whereas it takes me longer to, to read, read. A, read a book. Yeah. And I just don't. I find other things to do rather than to sit down and read a book. And then when I do sit down to read, I, I do enjoy it, but it, yeah. I have gotten out of the habit. So it's a movie for me. I never was a big movie person, so I think that's part of it too. Other than Lord of the Rings. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But or, even as a child, you were not no. a movie person other than Babe. Or horse movies. Or horse movies. But even some of the horse movies, you yeah. know, yeah. As long as nothing happened to the horse. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. All right. This one. Mm -hmm. Pizza or tacos? Tacos. Wow. I thought that was going to actually be tough for you. <laughs> I think that's maybe also a product of living in Tucson now and having so many good Mexican restaurants mm -hmm. that it's like, I mean, yeah, I do like pizza, but. I can get the tacos that we have around here. Yeah. Yeah. I'll go get Mexican food and get tacos. Well, you know that my answer is going to be tacos mm -hmm. because one of my favorite hobbies when traveling is <laughs> yes. to sample the street tacos of the various places, whether on the street or in restaurants. In restaurants. Mm -hmm. um, when we went to Nashville. Yeah, I was going to mention Nashville. Uh, Every place I went, I had a different kind of taco. Yeah, I think you had three tacos, three different types of tacos on that trip. Like in the first day. Yeah. Yeah. First, <laughs> first day days. and a half. Yeah. 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 So, so definitely tacos. Okay, we're going to do one more. Okay. Podcast or music? Hmm. Probably music. In that I only like fully listen to like every episode of a couple of podcasts. I've listened to other like parts of podcasts here and there, but mm -hmm. there aren't very many where it's like, okay, I've listened to, you know, every single one. Most of the time I'll have music on and then like the two girls new episode comes out. I'll listen to that one and then I'll go back to music. Okay. So I'm, I'm definitely on the music side, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't typically listen to podcasts unless they're a, a video podcast. And so I have found yeah. recently, because again, I'm a background noise person, mm -hmm. that when I'm doing something else on the computer on the other screen, I will put on a podcast oh, okay. that I know is going to last at least an hour. Mm -hmm. So I'm not always having to look for the next thing. And also, it's not something I have to pay incredibly close attention to. Right. Because most of the shorter form videos, yeah, you probably need to be paying attention to. Whereas the podcast, I can just listen to it. Right. Uh, it it's not important that I have my eyes on the screen and I can continue working and, and doing that. So right. if it's a video podcast, I will I will listen to it. But um, hmm. otherwise, it, it'd be music. Yeah, in the car, you're not necessarily listening to podcasts. I am not. I am listening to music. Interesting. Yeah. Well, I feel like more and more, you know, like we're doing, if you're recording audio, you might as well record the video with it and throw it up on YouTube. So Exactly. Exactly. You can so, find those now. Which brings us to, please like and subscribe. <laughs> Smooth. <laughs> and... Here's the graphic. You can listen to us in audio version on these different platforms. Mm -hmm. If you're not already listening to us you, on one yes, of those. Yes, if you're not already listening to us on one of those. Yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm going to stop there because I'm mindful of the fact that we have to depart here shortly. Anything else, though, in closing thoughts? Well, and my things that are coming up that I noted here recently um, on Instagram, Arizona State Parks posted that their um, October nights in the parks under the stars is back, their star parties. And so they've got several locations throughout the, the month of October that are hosting star parties if you want to go look at the stars and 
Well, what's really interesting, and I think it's right at the end of September, maybe into October, we're supposed to have a comet come mm. by. And, you know, their, their early predictions are often wrong, but they think that this one's actually going to be bright enough that you can see it with uh, the naked eye. Okay. And so that, if, if that, if you can get one of those to coincide with the timing of, of the comet coming around, so October 5th, they're at Kirchner Caverns in Picacho Peak State Park. So those ones might be early enough. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And then some more on the 12th and then a couple more on the 26th of October. Okay. Including Catalina State Park. So that one's close to us. That one's very close to us. I mean, so is Picacho Peak, but. Yes. They're both short drives. Yeah. So. Yeah, I saw that and went, hmm, that might be fun to do. Yes. We'll have to put a jacket on because it might drop down to 70. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, do you have anything else coming up? Uh, no. Okay. I, I Not that I'm aware of. I probably do, but... We'll recap next week. We'll recap next week once I remember what I was doing. Yes. All right. Well, with that... Have a great week. We will see you next week. And uh, hopefully back to our normal Sunday recording. Hopefully. Uh, we are recording this a little bit later, and I'm going to have to really hustle to get it out. So. Yeah. I won't be stuck in the Portland airport this time. That'd be mm. nice. Yes. <laughs> All right. Oh, we got to work on our outros. They're really not good. Yeah. See you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>